Let's see if Soren Kierkegaard can illuminate the freedom that comes with the practice of life in reality. Real life can say to an individual, you shall choose the one thing needful, but in such a way that there must be no question of any choice. That is, if you fool around a long time, then you are not really choosing the one thing needful. Like a relationship to the deep place, it must be chosen first. Consequently, there is something in relation to which there must not be, and by definition there can be, a choice, and yet there is a choice. Consequently, the very fact that there is no choice expresses the tremendous passion or intensity with which one chooses. Can there be a more accurate expression for the fact that freedom of choice is only a formal condition of freedom, and that emphasizing freedom of choice as such means the sure loss of freedom? The content of freedom is decisive for freedom to such an extent that the very truth of freedom of choice is, there must be no choice even though there is a choice. This is flow. But precisely because human beings are a long way from being flow, precisely therefore does freedom make so much trouble for them, since they continually remain suspended in freedom of choice. However surprising it may seem, one may say, therefore, that only fear and trembling and only constraint can help a person to freedom. For fear and trembling and constraint can master one in such a way that it is not a question of any choice. And then one very likely chooses the right thing. In the moment of death, most people choose the right thing. I don't like fear and trembling and constraint. What does this have to do with being free and finding flow? If this is real life, I'm not certain I want anything to do with it. You are not alone. Most human beings share a deep initial preference for a life of make-believe and pretend of their own creation. Now I think you're getting personal. Let's see what else Mr. Kierkegaard has to say. But of what use is science and scholarship? None, none at all. It relaxes everything in calm, objective observation, and thus freedom becomes an unaccountable something. Freedom really is freedom, only when in the same moment, the same second, it is freedom of choice. It rushes with infinite speed to bind itself unconditionally by the choice of attachment, the choice whose truth is that there can be no question of any choice. It is the indescribable wonder of ultimate love that God can really concede to an individual so much that, in regard to oneself, can want to speak almost like a suitor. Will you have me, or will you not? And then wait one single second for the answer. Alas, but a human being is not sufficiently flow. One thinks, since the choice is left to me, I will take my own time and first of all think it over very earnestly. Tragic anticlimax. Earnestness is precisely to choose the deep place and God immediately and first of all. And so one lies there and conjures with a phantom, freedom of choice, whether one has it or whether one does not, etc., and even does it in a scientific, scholarly way. One does not notice that they have missed freedom. But I like science and scholarship and thinking. What's wrong with Kierkegaard? Where'd you find this guy? I appreciate your struggle with this, but let's allow Mr. Kierkegaard to conclude his invitation to freedom and a life of flow. 
The most tremendous thing conceded to a human being is choice, freedom. If you want to rescue and keep it, there is only one way. In the very same second, unconditionally, in full attachment, give it back to God and yourself along with it. If the sight of what is conceded to you tempts you, if you surrender to the temptation and look with selfish craving at freedom of choice, then you lose your freedom. And your punishment, then, is to go around in a kind of confusion and brag about having freedom of choice. Woe to you! This is the judgment upon you. You have freedom of choice, you say, and yet you have not chosen God. Then you become ill. Freedom of choice becomes your fixed idea. Finally, you become like the rich person, morbidly imagining that they have become impoverished and will die of want. You sigh that you have lost the freedom of choice, and the mistake is merely that you do not sorrow deeply enough so that you get it back again.